What's going on guys? So today I'm gonna to be reviewing and installing the Renogy Smart Lithium Ion Phosphate Battery. I have two of the 100 amp hour batteries, so I'm gonna be installing them in parallel, just like Renogy recommends, and they are gonna be going right into our solar system in our camper van. So it is already halfway through the summer of 2021. I can't believe where the time went. Me and Kaylee have been driving around Alberta in this new van and it has been so much fun. I can't really say it's complete. I don't really know of camper vans, to be honest, unless you buy them manufactured or get someone else to build them. I don't really know if they're ever fully complete when you build them yourselves. Like there's always small things you wanna do, things you wanna make better, things you wanna work on. It's just kind of a never ending cycle, but we've been loving every part of camper van life. It's been so much fun. We just can't spend enough time in here. Now we want to figure out how we can quit our jobs and just travel around in here full time, but not quite yet. <laughs> These batteries are super popular in the solar market. If you're building a solar system for your RV, your camper van, your boat or your trailer, these batteries are gonna be a huge upgrade for you. If you're new to lithium, it's definitely the way to go. They're really lightweight. You can use 100% of its power. There are a ton of reasons to go to lithium and they're also coming down in price. Like right now, this battery is on sale for $769 Canadian, I believe. So that's a really good deal for a 100 amp hour battery. When I was first shopping for batteries for this camper van, it was, hard to find anything under a thousand dollars for a hundred amp hour. Don't forget to use that promo code made to travel. If you're shopping at Renogy, you'll get 5% off your order when you go to checkout. I'm going to go over three main reasons why you should consider buying a Renogy battery over other manufacturers. The first is going to be price. It is much more affordable than other manufacturers. Many of them are over a thousand dollars and it's common to get a Renogy 100 amp hour lithium battery for under a thousand dollars. Second is Renogy is a one-stop shop. So you can buy all of your solar products from them and you know they're all gonna be compatible with each other and work together flawlessly, which is one of the things I absolutely love. Third is gonna be customer service. Renogy has been great. They're very knowledgeable and they always get a hold of you very quickly when you reach out to them. There are definitely a few features that make this battery stand out compared to other manufacturers. Build quality on these batteries is outstanding and they are definitely made to last. These batteries also have a BMS, which is pretty common among lithium batteries. But if you wanna read more about BMS and what it does, in the blog post below in the description. Check that out. Auto balancing feature helps these batteries last longer and makes for a more efficient system overall. The last feature about this battery that I love is the RS-485 communication port. So this port allows for real-time monitoring through multiple different devices and it is super accurate. All right, so let's see what Renogy sent us. It's always fun getting a box from a box. There you go. Hey. So it looks like we got some stickers. Uh, the screws that go on top for connecting the positive and negative there. And then I'm pretty sure this is the activation button cable, the data cable with the button on top there. I'm pretty sure that changes the battery from shelf mode to active mode oh, there we go and there's the battery itself you know it's nothing like fancy but i like the matte black it honestly just uh it looks good it kind of industrial looking but um it's really simple so this is everything that comes in the box the battery obviously I actually really like that they give you two different size bolts. So they kind of have, um, I'm not really too sure. I'm gonna guess this is a half inch and this is probably a three quarter inch. But if you're putting uh, multiple wire lugs on top of this battery, chances are it's probably pretty, gonna be pretty big cable. Like I'm gonna be installing two aught cable on here. So if you're putting multiple lugs on there, you can actually catch that thread a little easier with a longer bolt. 
So, and these, um, these connection points seem really, really solid. And then um, on top here, you have your up port and your link port. So those are for connecting uh, battery monitors or you can also connect batteries together so it can link data. And then finally, you just have your manual. Mention, there's one thing in the safety instructions here. Do not charge the battery at low temperatures below zero degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So this battery can't charge or isn't supposed to be charged at below 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Renogy recently actually came out with a cold weather model that uh, has some heating capabilities in it. Uh, which I'm really excited about living here in Canada. Step number one is to switch the battery into active mode using the activation switch, which is right here. And you do that by simply plugging it into the up port. And then you simply just press the power button. Dim blue LED light on the power button will become bright blue to indicate that the battery has been successfully switched to active mode. If you want to switch it back into shelf mode, you basically reconnect this switch and then just hold that down for three seconds. So if you want to check to see what mode the battery is in at any time, you could basically just plug in this switch and if it is illuminated a bright blue color, it'll be in active mode and if it's a dimmer blue, it'll be in shelf mode, which is honestly pretty easy to tell. Before you wire it up, you wanna make sure that it's actually in shelf mode and then when everything's connected properly, you can go ahead and switch it to active mode. So I'm just gonna switch it back to shelf mode here by holding it down for three seconds. Guys, so we're ready for the next step. Let's go make some battery cables. So step number one, you wanna plan out your solar system. So if you haven't already done this, do it. And if you need help doing it, I have a simple solar guide that is perfect for DIYers and beginners. It's in the description below head over check out the link i would really recommend it it goes over wire size fuse size cable size all the components you need for a solar system in your camper van your boat or your rv so as you can see here i already have everything laid out i've already popped down one battery right there and i'm going to hopefully fit the other battery right next to it how you wire these guys up is you go positive to positive negative to negative but then you're gonna go positive to your main positive connection on one battery and then you're gonna go from the negative connection on the other battery to your main negative connection. I'm using two aught cable. I'm using this because I have a 2000 watt inverter and this is the size that Renogy recommends for 2000 watts and that is located in the manual on their website for these batteries right here. Now that I have the batteries in the location that I want them to go, I'm gonna go ahead and pull out some cable and measure um, how long I need for my lengths. I'm just gonna lay the wire out. This cable, this 2 watt cable is super expensive so you don't wanna waste any of it. This is about five feet and I purchased it on Amazon for about $85, which is actually a pretty good deal. Um, it's about the cheapest I could find, so I would recommend purchasing it on Amazon or else I'd probably go to a local electrical supply store and you might be able to get something a little bit cheaper, but I definitely wasn't. These are 5 16 2 aught wire lugs. These I also ordered on Amazon. It's tough to find this stuff uh, in local electrical supply stores. Um, it's uh, not very common to use uh, this size wire. So you really don't need very many tools for this job. The one tool you will need is a crimper. It's really important with wire this thick that you get a really good crimp. So as you can see there, that is nice and solid. These you can buy on Amazon for like 15, 20 bucks. And all you need to do is basically whack the top with the hammer and that'll set your crimp in nice and strong. So hammer crimp, hammer, knife, and then some electrical tape. If you want to get fancy, you can get some wire shrink tubing. Step one on putting lugs on the wire is um, 
kind of roughly measuring how much insulation you need to cut off. So we need to cut off about there. Because this is simply, and that just slides off. Boom. Just like this. I've got the batteries all wired up and installed. They're looking pretty good. I'm excited to try them out. One thing I wanted to mention is having all my solar components for energy, it's really nice to know that they're all designed to work together. Like all of these components have different set settings. So your inverter is gonna have different settings for charging your batteries. Your solar charger is gonna have different settings and different manufacturers make different settings. You think all lithium batteries would be the same, but there actually are different parameters for different models of battery. Um, so it's really nice to know that all I have to do is set these things to lithium batteries and they're gonna charge them exactly how they're designed to be charged. If I install a different type of battery in here, I need to go into custom parameters and make sure all those parameters are acceptable for that battery. So that's one thing that's really nice about having the same product throughout your whole solar system. So it is time to switch these from shelf mode to active mode. So I'm gonna go plug the switch into the up port. You can see it's dim. So I'll hold that in there. And it just went bright. So that means it's in active mode. On the install, if you have a smart battery monitor from Renogy, you would link these two ports and then go from the up port to the battery monitor. So you go from the up port to the link port with your data cable, and then you would go from the up port to your battery monitor. As you can see, I have a shunt installed here because I have the 500 amp Renogy battery monitor. And then I also have the BT2 hooked up to my DC to DC charger. So that's how I monitor my batteries but I would recommend getting that smart battery monitor um, if you're picking these up uh, instead of the shunt. So I just turned on my inverter and plugged in right there. So we are charging up those batteries. They seem to be working great so far. Um, I've tried a few things inside. Uh, yeah, they seem to be operating great. So time to put them to the test and hit the road. Last thing you're gonna wanna do is secure those batteries in place by either building a frame or lots of people tend to just use straps. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and probably build a frame that goes around them. I'm also gonna support my inverter with the same frame. So if you have any temperature sensors that you need to place by the batteries, I have one on my solar charger as well as my inverter. So I place those just in between the two batteries to pick up an accurate temperature reading in case they overheat, it'll shut down the charging cycles. If you guys have any questions regarding any of the Renogy products that I've installed on my system, or the lithium ion batteries, please feel free to comment below in the description. I'll do my best to answer them as quickly as possible. Let me know in the comments what battery you're considering buying, whether it's Renogy, Canbat, Battleborn, or Dakota. There's a ton of batteries out there, so comment below which is your favorite battery. If you guys like this video, if you did, give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you want more, and hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when we post a new video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.